Uh, welcome to Vintel Kicker Problems. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sounds about right. The issues we deal with, people don't realize. <laughs> but yeah, uh -huh. I uh, definitely would love to see like a more s specific video on that. I think people should share those little tips and techniques because it can revolutionize the way you're picking certain locks, especially the 600. Come on, if you can use that trick on that, are you kidding? Yeah. Because that's yeah, like that's and like RL says, it's, it's kind of turning my uh, flag or my uh, pick into a flag in a lot of mm -hmm. spots. So it's kind of going back and forth between them. A hundred percent. I will tell them on this ace, the standard pins are acting like papers. So that could be an issue as well. Ah, uh, yeah, that could be a problem. Ooh, that'll, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the dude abides, um, I think I'm going to call you just Abides. I like that. <laughs> no, all right. It's fine by me. I mean, is that, it, how do you, what, is that what you, how do you say your name? Like when you're announcing yourself on, how do you say your name and stuff? Is it just the dude, the dude Abides? Or am I even saying it right? Yeah, I know you're dude. saying it right. It's all from uh, the Big Lebowski movie. Gotcha. Uh, I, I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. Dude. Dude. We could call him dude. I oh, like on. that a lot. Like just dude. <laughs> Is this basic or were you basic in chat? Is that no, uh, no, no, I wasn't basic in chat. I'm just working on my uh green belt and skipping the orange belt because locks aren't cheap. And we just yep. happen to be working on the exact same lock. Oh. Which is the ace thirty eight millimeter. What size this one is? This is to try to do through the uh, camera. Yeah, they can be tough. Those ace, I like those locks. Those ace locks are yeah. really nice little locks, to be honest. They're very well made. Yeah. There's no yeah, getting around that. They're a lot yeah. better than master. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah, the, the feedback is significantly better. I can typically feel what I'm doing. <laughs> But I am having the same problem that uh, Basic was having, where I will uh, get some of the pins uh, set, and I feel like I'm getting like all of these ones over here set. And then when I try to set this one, I feel like it goes into a deep false set, and just everything dead. There's no feedback. And I've tried letting loose on the, or letting up on the tension yeah, uh, to try to counter-rotate. But no matter how small I try to make that counter-rotation, no, everything it's keeps it's clicking down and I end up going in this endless... Yeah. Hmm. Now, I found a lot of times that when you're going through locks that are kind of like... Um, when you have a random spool pins in there and you're picking and then things will fall and then you know you're kind of doing that kind of circle i just usually find that it's because i'm oversetting something along the way but i can never figure out what it is and so like obviously until you get it picked but it's like if you just because that the pin doesn't bind until that specific time after the other ones go right so it's not like you can pick it ahead mm -hmm. of time so it's like you're kind of stuck following the circle until you figure out which thing it is that you you're oversetting by a little bit or not enough or whatever oh, um i'm wondering if when you're picking that one pin and then everything drops i'm wondering if you're either picking it too high or not high enough to actually set this the spool on it so that's that's what i'm wondering because that's what i find a lot of times i'm either not you know i'm pushing it up too far and so now i overset or i didn't i think i set it but i actually didn't set it and so it's dropping kind of back down when everything else drops so i'm yeah. wondering if that could be happening to you 
Maybe. I'm also usually pretty heavy handed with my tension, and with this block, I'm trying to be lighter. Because yeah. I feel like that might have been my issue, but it's still not fixing anything. Oh. So, so we're in that get deep a... set again. Okay, when you get that fault set, and you find something that's a spool that's countering, and you pick that one, do you lose your fault set? Uh, not there. We went back into another fault set. And again... And nope, I lost the other pins. I got number two. My number two pin went up, and then I think three and four dropped. Okay, do you right still there. have your false set, or is your false set gone too? Uh, it's a lesser false set, but I still have part of one. Okay. Well, we'll stop right. Find the standard pin and get back in that deep false set. For me, it's pin three, but find out which pin's giving you the false set. Just lightly tap them. They act tapers, so like on mine, if, I have to tap between two and three to get that back. If you have a um, slight fall set now and not the deep fall set anymore, then most likely you most likely you basically pinched um, a pin in between the core and the housing, and once you hit it, it will kind of crunch into position again. Yeah, and then you have again your norm normal fall set. Yeah, so kind of test them out. Don't don't really try to pick anything until you get back to your bigger false set. All right, just it's trying to figure out what you overset. Binding. But... Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. I think I did because nothing's binding right now. Okay. Yeah. Nothing binding sounds like overset. Yes. Yeah. Same so let off lock. tension <laughs> just a little bit, but not a lot. Just let it off a tiny bit and see if anything is going to drop for you. If yeah, nothing something drops, binding. one's okay. binding and two's binding, three's okay. not binding, and then Pick the one four's that the stiff. <laughs> okay. Yeah, which one seems to be the toughest, the hardest binding one? You might not be able to tell, or, but sometimes you can. Let off tension lightly to check and check between the two. And when one goes soft, you know, pick the other one. Okay. I think, I think that's a great way for determining is binding now. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think it was uh, Apama that um, great suggestion for determining how much tension to use. Um, if you don't get any binders, you're not using enough. So use more. And if you're getting more than one binding, you're using too much. Let off until you only get one. I like and then that. anything in between there is personal preference. And you know, it depends on the lock on which will work better. But I like that. All right. That's some good advice. Yeah. Sometimes if you basically have also too much tension and you basically feel that two pins are binding, one will definitely bind stiffer. And the other yeah. one will most likely want to come up again, but you feel like you pinch it too much. And if you then, that is the thing we um, say always about um, tension must be uh, dynamic, basically. And um, you loosen up a little bit of tension, then you feel, feel this pin coming up again. And the other one is still totally binding. And... Um, yeah, to, to pinch really two pins that much that that they basically bind both the same way, yeah. you really have to overdo the tension. <laughs> okay. uh, the thing is, I'm trying to go lighter on the tension, which is lighter than I usually have been. And yeah. while the feedback's nice in this ace, the pins and everything also just seem to be really sensitive. So yeah, where are you now? Easy to overset. Yeah. yeah. And like if Lock Chuck's saying like they're they feel like tapered as well, they could actually have a little bit of a taper. Yeah, on. they're they're a little rounded. Um, yeah. Did I put that one back up? Let's, and yeah, that makes up. it a really tough challenge because <laughs> tapered pins are very annoying and just yeah, and really annoying. And they do it does make it harder to pick something when they just keep kind of dropping into that space and also it makes it really easy to overset things when there's a tapered pin because you have that little bit of a 
spot where it's like you could easily push that key pin up, you know, where you're trying to set those tapered pins. Yeah. Okay. It's, I've got it into the their, their situation. I'm in my default set, but nothing binding. Okay. So now what? Yeah, I'm going to have to sit here and... Ooh, okay. Well, I just tried to pick mine, and I hit one pin, and it opened. So now what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> swap your 38s. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally sitting here looking at the freaking key, and that pin should not have even needed lifted because it's like, I don't understand what happened. It definitely doesn't look like it picks like it does by looking at the key. <laughs> That I think really looking cool. at the key all, almost always confuses me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tend yeah. to to want to lift way too much, and yeah, it's crazy. It is, it's especially if I take a long break from locks. It's like ah, I have to lift it higher. I have to lift it higher, and then the, in the end, it was almost like only a little lift. Like jiggling yeah. was enough to set the hmm. one. All right, I, I basically cheated now. I looped my log. <laughs> I hope it is. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you've got nothing binding, or is there anything binding in there? Um, I got another pulse set. I've got that one and two are binding together lightly, but this time the two seems to be the more loose one. Or the more uh, binding one. Okay. Now see if you can set. Is it giving any counter rotation? Is that how you're knowing it's it's binding? Or is it just binding without counter rotation? It was just binding without the counter rotation. Okay. So I'm, I'm guessing that's what a standard pin. Or I guess but if you're on a full set, you can't have a standard pin. pin. Yeah. If you're in a false set, it should definitely be... Um, Counter rotating. Counter rotating. Yeah, weird. Give mm -hmm. it a pick. Let's see what happens. Who knows? Sometimes, if you don't get counter rotate, counter rotation, you probably have to counter rotate your core a little bit. I do that with a pick, not with a tensioner. I basically yep. lose up the oh, tension. Oh, that's smart. Turn a little bit with a pick and then try to feel for the pins. Sometimes this little turning back of the core gives um, the spool enough room that it can again act like it should that you have or that you feel this counter rotation yeah. sometimes the full fault set will basically stop pins from doing that yeah yeah that's what I was much talking about earlier with using the pick to uh, mm -hmm. pressure on the pin that's another thing that would be cool to show on a video Morrison. Need to make a graph. Make I should make graphics. <laughs> ah, crap. Yeah. Dropped everything. That's okay. That's okay. As you're here's the thing. When that happens and you're you're dropping things and you're figuring it out, you're figuring it out little by little. So now you know, yeah. you know, try to leave that pin alone altogether. Just ignore it now. <laughs> that number yeah, two. Yeah, that two pin. Yeah, get to your false set, and then even if number two is binding, just ignore it, and then go for that number three that was binding, and see if so something happens. Because yeah. sometimes, honestly, I ignore pins. Like, okay. I will it's just best completely <laughs> not. Like, if I don't know what to do with it, I will just like, don't even touch it. Like, if I'm not sure, I'll not yeah. even touch it. And a lot of times, that you know, eventually you come back around and it binds again. And it's like you can do something to it then, or you'll figure out, oh, okay, now it's counter rotating or something. But when you're in doubt, just don't even touch it and try something else. That's I, that's a tip. I, I, would I think often through that because um, I wonder how that can be. And I came to the point it could be that a pin or something has kind of little imperfections on on the um, on the cylindrical yep. shape. Might it be um, because you picked it, you used too much tension, there was kind of a, no idea, dirt or dust or something on it. And this little um, point, which needs basically more room, will cause that every other pin will drop. And that is not um, on the logical, yeah, kind of, it's not the normal way how the lock would um, kind of act. 
But if you think that a pin can have imperfections, like like a little thing standing out, and then you want to push it down and nothing is binding, and at a certain point, it basically wants a bit more room, every other pin will drop, even if it isn't set it. Yeah. I don't think it's a pin deformation because the same thing's happening with my other Ace 38. It's so not a I think it's a me it's thing, not a lock thing. Stretch or something. It can can be everything. Mm. So one of the things, uh, it's funny. Um, it's something I kind of I, I I knew in the back of my head, but I went all the way through black belt without like fully learning this. Um, I will get a lock. I'll get really frustrated. I'll be thinking, what do I need to learn? There's something I haven't learned yet. I need some little, there's some piece of data. There's, you know, not, not even necessarily a trick, just some technique or something that I need to know that I'm not getting. So I'm not getting this lock. When in reality, I just need more practice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. a lot of the times, you know, you may know everything you need to get the lock open. Like this test of T60. Um, I know what I need to do for it. And I, I'm going through and it's like, okay, you know, it's like, I think that's binding. Give it a tap. You know, it's like, it, it's all tapered. They're nasty tapers. Um, but it's, I don't have a lot of practice with either tapers or dimples. I need more practice with flags to get this lock. It's not that I don't know what I need to do. I don't need to learn some trick. I don't need to learn some technique. Um, I need to practice that technique. Yeah. And so a matter of theoretical like, versus practical knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I keep forgetting that. And I have to remind myself. And it's like, it's the same thing with the, uh, the with side thing. pins. On, on <laughs> Over setting is the same. The yeah. For me. And yeah, sorry, interrupted you. No, that's fine. That, that, I was just rambling on the same thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I found this is a point uh, Lady Locks brought up like, um, if you pick the lock and you feel like you over and over um, let pins drop. Then you basically, I do it like that. I don't really uh, take note while I pick. Probably I'm not concentrated enough. I think when I did black belt and so on, I really concentrated which pin does what. And I basically map it in my mind and um, in my brain. And um, yeah, so right now I'm just picking the binder. And at a certain point, I drop everything. And then I get like, OK, what happened? And I tried again, and I tried again. And at one point, I need to remember, probably I overlift something. And then you should really take note which pin you touched when everything dropped. And then the best point Lady Lock said was, um, don't touch this pin, ignore it. Even if yeah. the key <laughs> looks like you mm -hmm. have to set it, somehow it probably yeah. don't need to be set. Yeah. And really avoid it and uh, pick other, the other um, pins. And also, by avoiding really kind of tilt your pick like that or for for you it's basically like that that you get the most room um above the pins in front that you don't overlift them and yeah i yeah. think yeah. A, it's a hard I, task but i think a lot too is it's hard to ignore something binding yeah, yeah it's hard to ignore it. like, you just, yeah you, yeah you you're, that's what we're here for, right? That's what we're in here to do. We're just messing with it. Like, we got to get to it, whatever. Da, da, da. But you kind of have to, like, tell yourself, wait, just leave it alone. <laughs> Try something else. Like, there's other stuff going on. I found that I made myself slow down because yeah. I, was, I was doing that. Like, I will just go through there and anything I feel binding, I'm click, click, and I keep going, you know, and I've watched a couple videos of mine where I know, I know I'm, when I'm picking it, I'm not bitch picking it. I know what I'm doing when I'm in there and I'm touching each pin and if something binds, I click it and then I move on real quick to the next thing. And I was looking going, slow down and just 
Mm -hmm. Try everything, go around and touch every pin first, then make a decision on what to do next. Because a lot of times I just go and if it's binding, I hit it and then go to the next, right? But now yeah. I find if I'm if it's a lock I'm having trouble with, I will stop doing that and I will just test everything once and then go all right, now what should I do? Because th there's three of them binding or, you know, this one's counter rotating a little better than that one or whatever it might be. But now I can make an educated decision on which one to do next instead of just doing the first one that works, that, that binds. Because I was just moving too fast and, you know, picking the next binder, which, but if I would have went like, the other way the other one would have bound you know i would have picked that one first because it's the first one i ran into that had anything that i could do so i'm thinking see what everything's doing first like check on them all and see what they're all doing and then decide what the hell you want to pick next because sometimes that's all it takes for you to make the educated choice of like you know oh now i see this one's doing that and this one wasn't and you know back and forth and all around if you just stop and and try to figure it out and like a lot of times ignoring certain things you just have to you just have to go you know what i'm not sure so i'm not gonna touch it because yeah. i find myself getting into trouble with that where i wouldn't be sure but i'm like well eh, i mean it's binding it you know it just feels like a little weird so eh. And then I'd still pick it and then I'd find I'm still dropping things and I'm still <clears throat> whatever the problem is, I'm still running into problems. So I just decided from now on, if I don't know and I'm not sure and it feels a little off or it doesn't feel quite right, I just don't even touch it. And then because here's the thing, eventually it will be that <laughs> that pin's turn to be picked and it'll be clear what I'm supposed to do. You know, it might not be clear right now, but in three other pins set first now it's clear what i'm supposed to do with that one you know <clears throat> so there's those little tiny things that kind of help you like you said morrison you gotta like apply that you know that but you gotta like really work on applying yeah. it because oh. it, it's easy to just go 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 you know and not slow slow my, slow <laughs> my yeah. number one advice tends to be slow down um because and that's where watching youtube videos can actually be detrimental i mean yes. you can learn a lot from them but there's a habit to you know just follow that pattern of okay boop, 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 boop. and uh when you're learning a lock you really don't want to pick it that way i don't think i yeah I, it's like painfully slow you know yeah like this you know and not just moving from pin to pin, but in lifting the pin. Yeah. Lifting the pin should be really slow because then mm. when it snaps into set, you don't uh, have a lot of force behind it where you're shoving it into overset. Right. You can stop that it. That might be my problem. Yeah. Okay. So I would recommend slowing way down painfully slow like oh my god what am i doing <laughs> yeah I, you know what's funny um <clears throat> i think it was loose that actually said something similar to me about one of these locks i think it was loose that said you need to s do it really slowly pick that one really slowly and i was like why slowly but yeah it makes sense why you would want to pick it slowly because yep. you know like you said even pushing up the pin if you push it up slowly, you're going to figure out that, you know, you don't have to push it as far or as hard and you're not oversetting it. Yep. And, uh, the yeah, that's, P that's extra I taught me that one. I yeah. mean, there, and oddly enough, it wasn't the spools. It was the standard sitting in, at number one. Um, it was like a slight, it had a slight taper to it. And yeah. if, if, uh, if I had the slightest bit of speed, that that thing would shoot over set oh uh, and the other purple uh, lock i kind of i can't really recommend it because it's so uncommon but the kodai kcy 31 the nagasaga nagasawa um i i hated that lock when i first started it because it felt like a random a box full of rng i could <laughs> not 
figure out what was going on. It cool. turns out the key pins, you know how the bottom key pins are often rounded? Yes. The key pins mm-hmm. were vertically symmetrical. The tops are just as rounded as the bottom. Oh, geez. Really? So that they're is- not torpedoes. They won't, they won't catch in an overset trap, but they will overset extremely easy. And I had to slow down even more for that one. And how does that affect yeah. the feedback? Uh, I, when I first started picking it, I didn't think it had any feedback. It was just like, what is going on with this lock? <laughs> it was Japanese, so I was. It's like, oh, I love the goal lock, so let me let me try this yeah. one. Uh, yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Wow. I did find out with picking this one when I was getting it into the fault set a while ago when you said it wouldn't give you any feedback. Yeah. The counter rotation is so small. What I actually see more is the core bouncing. Mm. Ah. So right now, all the pins, I believe, are set. Oops, I'm sorry. I got it so close trying to zoom in. But... <laughs> Everything feels solid, so the core doesn't move when I touch any pin, except when I go to number five. And I don't know if it'll show it, but let's see. Oh, yeah. See that oh. core come going up and down? Uh-huh. Yeah. If I do it on any other pin, it doesn't move. As soon wow. as I go to number five, oh. you'll see that core bounce. Yeah. And it's like just a couple small pins pushes it. I mean, it's not much. I can't, now I'm going to lose it on camera. But. And you'll, you'll often and feel that in the tensioner. Yeah. yeah you'll Sometimes you'll feel it more in the tensioner spell. than you'll see it. Yeah. And of course now I've probably lost it. But yeah, that I lost my fault set. But that was pin five. It was the last spool that wanted to be set. Okay. And I couldn't figure and, out okay. why I couldn't learn the jiggle test but I was still getting locks open. It was because of things like that, where I was feeling it in the tensioner yeah. and just subconsciously just felt right. Nope. I just dropped it. Yeah. Oh, here's a question for you guys. Do you have a favorite lock for like learning the jiggle test or for uh, being able to read your feedback? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that. My the which one? Favorite lock, SR six hundred with gins. Gins, because I, I was just because okay. I mentioned that that's the same kind of core response that you do for when you're testing for gins. Um, it, it needs just so much precision and basically no force at all that you really have to listen to the feedback. And um, yeah, it gives gives you a ton of feedback. This lock. You said SR six hundred. Yeah. Yeah. The SS- like right, a lower rank one down. would be that Kodai, but like I said, that's rare. Because um, basically, I didn't learn the jiggle test until purple. And the the the, Gege, the P-Extra, and the Kodai forced me to learn the jiggle test properly uh, in order to get them open. Yeah, see, I still don't know it. I still don't know what the hell I'm doing for that jiggle test. I can't feel that little bit of spring or whatever it is you're supposed to feel. I just don't know what, I don't know how people can feel that. And I don't know how I got my 600 open without knowing that unless I'm using the same thing, like watching the core. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're subconsciously you're picking up on, on cause that, that's what was happening with me. It's like, it's either right or wrong. It just feels, right. yeah. you know, it feels like this. I should pick this pin. And yes. I don't know why, but it just feels like <laughs> yeah. I should pick this pin. And yes. So you're like subconsciously picking up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's you're, pick, it. you're picking up on the jiggle test. You just, and the funniest thing is okay, so uh, I opened an 1100 45 minutes after getting it out of the package. And then I picked it again that evening. So I knew it wasn't a fluke. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, well, I hit you hearing about the jiggle test. I should learn it. So I st- try to start doing the jiggle test and I can't get the lock open again for almost a month oh jeez! <laughs> because i'm trying to do it properly or whatever mm-hmm. and it just i it just doesn't work and i just yeah. it so 
it, it was really weird. It wasn't until purple that, and I slowed really, really slowed down. That oh, it very kind nice. Of finally sunk in. Nice job, Lock Chuck. Yeah, that's nice. a, for it to be an orange belt. That's a that can be a beast for a new picker. Yeah, that so was um, tricky. I think it's right, a blue I, belt or a green belt. Sorry, green. Uh, yeah, green. Yeah. Um, was the person having trouble? I'm not sure who was who, but um, I saw somebody was picking in hand. Was the um, oh, that was me. Yeah, that was uh, that was dude. He was picking in hand. I'm gonna put him up. Okay. I'm gonna put uh, us back. Say, up here. If you are yeah, having trouble with the lock, I recommend doing it in a vice. Um, yeah. Do you have? Yeah, I might get a vice. You don't have. I don't have a vice. Mm. Even if it's um, you might have an extra yeah, it doesn't have to be this big thing. Uh, you know, one of these draws, the small rig. Oh, I got it into the deep set, deep fall set. Because um, so, it's really hard to be uh, precise in hand. Yeah. 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 And here's the thing with that. Okay. So the more that I know you're getting annoyed because things are dropping and you keep having to start over and it's super annoying. But the deal is with that. Uh, Dig taught me this. Even when that happens, you are learning how to pick that lock so much better because you're repeating that same process to get to that point each yeah. time. So mm -hmm. as you're dropping and having to start over, it's not a big deal because you're going to eventually be able to get that back to your false set. Like, almost immediately because you're going to have practiced that so many times by that point. So even though it kind of is annoying and it sucks, think of it as just more practice, you know, that yeah. you're getting that practice, getting to that false set. And trust me, by the time you, you know, get that down, you'll be really quick getting it really quickly. And, you know, then you really only have to learn the part after this because you've gotten this down pretty good now. So, you know, you've gotten back into your false set several times, and that's really a lot of the battle of getting these locks open is getting that false set. You know, that's a big deal, you know, so you're doing a great job with it. All right. Appreciate that. Um, Jeff and Yeah, says, that's why I brought bring up the practice, because it can get so frustrating, and it's like, that I, I just have to remind myself. It's like, no, this is practice. I'm getting closer. Yeah. <laughs> you know what Isaac Isaac taught me also that you shouldn't be trying to get your lock open when you're picking when you're getting a new mm. lock and you're trying to no you know oh, work yeah. with it. you shouldn't even be thinking about getting it open you should just be thinking about what does everything Exploring. feel like yeah what's going on with this what if I push this what happens what do I you know how's it feel when I overset yeah. let me let me practice dropping the pins. Let me do this and just practice all this different stuff and try to learn a bunch of different stuff. And in the meantime, your lock's going to open because you've figured it out at that point. But instead of focusing on like open, 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 focus on each pin and what you're figuring out with each pin. And like, you know, if I hit this one, it goes into a deep false set. What does that mean? That means it must be this or that. And, you know, think it through and mess around in there instead of worrying so much about, like, trying to open it right away. You know, just kind of mm -hmm. play yeah. around and see what you figure out, you know? Because I oh, think right. And, you eventually yeah. get it open, and you're like, damn, okay. <laughs> and, uh, I still uh, have to do that with my American lock that's coming. Mm -hmm. ah, there you go. And the quote uh, you put up uh, that Jeff uh, was referring to, um, yeah. yeah, that's perfect because um, it's also what I'm saying is locks are small mechanical devices. Yeah, These are small mm -hmm. things with small things in them. Yes. Um, you should not be using forces that, um, uh, requ that are required to remove a ball joint. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that's one of the things that helped me is I'm coming from th doing a lot of things with like auto mechanics and stuff like that. I know right. that um, 
the large forces needed for those kind mm-hmm. of things. And like working with a carburetor and screwing in a jet or, you know, uh, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, you don't want to use uh, suspension forces on this. You, you should be, this is closer to watchmaking. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've done picking. some of that too. Yeah, it's it is a lot of times I same thing more than I have to not that I did any mechanical things like that, but I do right. have to remind myself you're not moving it that far. You're not yeah, you yeah. Know, it's such a tiny, tiny space that you're moving it's into so that thin. you really yeah. have to cut it in half, like cut it in half. Just <laughs> and like this is my most used pick probably, and you can see a very slight bow yeah. just you know because of the massive usage but that's it that's the closest i've ever mm-hmm. come to bending or breaking a pick yeah 